Let's dive in and make a tiramisu dessert. It's an Italian dessert that's a showstopper. Let's get cracking. We'll begin by making the sabion in a stainless steel bowl over simmering water. Combine egg yolks, sugar, and a splash or two of masala fino. Keep the heat low and stir continuously. Patience is key here. After several minutes, the mixture will thicken to a ribbon-like consistency, and that's just how we like it. In the description, I'll put the recipe, and I'm using a thermometer here because I'm going between for a target of 65 to 70 degrees C. But you can see I've got that lovely ribbon consistency. That's what you're looking. For an extra airy texture, you can transfer the sabi into a stand mixer and whisk it until it turns a pale, fluffy cream. It'll take a minute or two. Now, when we add the mascarpone cheese, it's crucial that it's at room temperature. This ensures when we add it in, it blends seamlessly with our sabion, giving us that velvety texture we're after. Use a whisk and mix in your mascarpone cheese. This is genius over Christmas pudding or even over fruit as a sauce. Don't go too crazy, but that looks about perfect. In a separate bowl, we need to whip some cream and get soft peaks. This will add the signature fluffiness to our tiramisu. Gently fold the whipped cream into the mascarpone mixture. Remember, folding it gently and turning the bowl is going to help as well as we run that spatula through there and combine it all together and nip around the side of the bowl every now and again just to get that cream that tends to stick up the side there. Let's prepare our dipping liquid. Combine cold espresso with your favorite coffee flavored liqueur, Tia Maria or Kahlua, or even a splash of dark rum and brandy or amaretto will do the trick. Now we're gonna dip the lady fingers in here. Now, I like them a little soggy, some people don't, so adjust how long you dip them for and then lay them into your bowl or presentation tray that you're going to use. Then half of the mascarpone mix goes over the top and then using a spatula, just smear it about to cover them. It doesn't have to be too accurate here. Yeah, you've got to subscribe, right? And now what we're going to do is do it all again. Remember, if you soak them in there too long, they'll be really soggy. Lay them over the top. Now the last of your mascarpone mix goes over the top. I'm using a big spatula here. It didn't really make any difference, the small one or the big one. So use whatever you've got, but get it all the way to the edges as best you can. Smear it about. And it's always good to make this a day in advance because it gets better after it's spent a night in the fridge. That is for sure. Now let's sprinkle some cocoa over the top. Be generous, use a good cocao over the top. And then for the piece de resistance is some chocolate, some grated chocolate we're gonna get over here. This just gives it that extra 5% magic and all that chocolate will fall off onto the plate when we serve it up. And what we need to do now is get it into the fridge. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you like the video, I'd love a thumbs up, I'd love a comment, and I'd love a subscribe. It helps me out. Thanks for watching. There's loads more videos coming your way. See you soon. Yeah, and if you want to flash it up a little bit, a really good balsamic drizzled around it would be great. And if you want to serve it in a glass for something a little bit different, this is what we did in a cooking class recently. So just layer it exactly the same way. And then you just have a bit extra on top like that, right? Smear it off the top, get it back into the bowl because you can use that for the next one. So when we do the cooking classes, that's in New Zealand at Galt's Deli. If ever you're in town, come and say hello. We'd love to see you. Get your cocoa over the top, just the same. And of course, a really good quality balsamic. Cheers to that. Thank you for watching.